We've been going through the Sermon on the Mount. Last week's message, we talked about uh, judging others. And this week, we're, we're getting into ask, seek, and, and knock. But the Sermon on the Mount, this is in the beginning of, of Matthew. It starts in Matthew chapter 5. We've gone through this for several weeks, and we've got a several weeks more to go. Um, and this is a, a sermon. Jesus had just... He had been baptized. He had been in the desert with Satan trying to deceive him, trying to tempt him. And then he went around, he gathered disciples, and then he went and he healed all that came to him. And as they followed, he went up to the mountain and he spoke these words that we're studying now. And this is a a little bit different than, than what it was back with Moses when Moses was leading the Israelites out of Egypt, Moses had to go up to the mountain to see God. And here, Jesus was, went up to the mountain to speak to us, to speak words of life, words of encouragement to us. And we'll continue this morning in Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to read verses 7 through 12. Matthew 7, starting at verse 7, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the doors will be opened to you. In verse 7, it, it starts out with ask and it will be given to you. You know, there, there's, there's, there's a lot to this, this asking. You like to think, oh, so if I just ask God, so whatever I want, the Bible's telling me here, right, that I just have to ask and it's going to be given to me, right? That's what the Bible just says. That's what we'd like to think, right? Ask and it will be given to you. But there's more to it than just just that that asking. There needs to be faith. There needs to be lining up with the will of God. Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 through 20. Matthew 18, starting in verse 19, it says again, I tell you that if two of you are... On earth, agree about anything you ask for. It will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where, the, for where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. So now he's saying, if there's two, two of you and you agree, wherever two or three come together in my name, there I am. I am with them. But he says, where there are two of you, anything that you ask for in my name, I will give it to you. So now it's not just one, now it's two. So if there's two of you, you come together and ask. And Jesus is saying, this is Jesus speaking. He says, I'm going to give it to you. But he adds a little bit more to that. He says, if you come together in my name, There am I with you. So it's coming together in the name of God. But it's more than just coming together in the the name of God because there are many, we'll read later, there are many that came in the name of God, but they didn't know who God was. They didn't know who Christ was. Jesus himself says, get away from me, for I did not know you. And then again in Matthew 21, verses 21 and 22, It it says, this is Jesus again. He said, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. If you have faith and do not doubt, 
Not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. So now it adds another qualifier. So now it's not coming in the name of, name of God. Now it's saying, but if you believe, if you believe, anything that you ask for will be given to you. So there's more to this, this asking. We need to come in the name of the Lord. And when we come in the name of the Lord, that means we're coming, lining up with everything that lines up with the Word of God. So we're not just asking out of our own desires. We're not asking out of our own wants. We're asking because we're lying, um, lining up our lives, our hearts, our motives, our everything with God. And so when we ask, we're asking God's will to be done. Remember the Lord's Prayer, Lord, your will be done. We're asking things that line up with God. And then, not, then we're not just asking. We're actually believing that he will answer. And I think we get stumbled on this a lot. You know, we, we read the word of God. We, we line up our prayer with, with, with what the word of God says. And then we, we ask God. We petition to God. But then we don't believe. We struggle in our unbelief. The Bible tells us that we're not to waver to the right or to the left. And we're good at wavering to the right or left because we don't, we don't come to God in belief. Jesus says, come to me like little children. Why? Because little children have this childlike faith that they just believe. And we struggle with that belief. So when Jesus is telling us to ask and it will be given to you, he's saying if you ask and, you, and when you ask, you're lining it up with the will of God. You're believing that God can and will answer you. So you're praying in faith. And then the next thing he says is, Seek and you will find. Seek and you will find. On well, Psalm 34, verses 4 and 5, Psalm 34, verses 4 and 5, this is, this is a psalm of David. It says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. So David, he, he says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. So when David was struggling, he was seeking the Lord, and the Lord answered him. So when you're struggling, are you seeking the Lord? Because if you're seeking the Lord, he will answer you. And again in Psalm 37, verse 4. I love this verse. Psalm 37, verse 4, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. And this delight means that you are seeking God. You are lining your heart up with who God is. And now when you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. So when you ask, God will give you those desires because now your desires line up with the heart of God. And that's where we need to be. We need to get our desires to line up with the will of God. And next, Jesus goes to knock. Knock and the door will be open to you. You know, the door, to, the door to, to heaven and eternal life, that had been closed since the fall of man. And it hadn't been opened 
until Christ. So the door to heaven had been, had been closed when, when the, from the fall of man, and it was never opened again until Christ. And in Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and, and 17, Matthew 3, verses 16 and 17, this is, this is the first time that, that heaven was, was open. It says, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Because of Christ, heaven has been opened. So Jesus stands at the door of our hearts in Matthew or in Revelations. Chapter 3, verse 20. Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. This is Jesus. He says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and, and he with me. Jesus himself, he stands at the door of our hearts and he knocks. He wants to come into our lives. It's a door that, that isn't, that Jesus isn't, if you see the image of this door, it's not an image of Jesus having a doorknob on his side. It's, it's a, a blank slab, and the handle is only on our side. And he knocks on the door of our hearts, trying to speak life and encouragement. And in Revelations chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, Revelations chapter 3, this is Jesus. He says, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength. Yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. This door to heaven's gates, eternal life. This is a door that no one can shut. No other person can shut, but it's, but it's a door that we can keep closed. It's a door that we can close ourselves. But it's a door that, is, that has been given the opportunity for us to enter. This door of faith, this door of eternal life. And in Acts chapter 14, verses 26 through 28. Acts 14, verse 26, it says, From Italia they said they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they have, had now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there a long time with the disciples. So this, this door of faith has been opened. It has been opened not just to the Jews. Remember, it was to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. And now this door has been opened to us, this door of faith. And this faith is in Jesus Christ. This faith is eternal life with God. And so this door, he says, if you knock, the door will be open to you. If you ask, if you seek, if you knock. So you're asking you're seeking and you're knocking. You're asking with faith, believing. You're seeking the will of God. And you're knocking at a door of eternal life. Desiring to enter into the kingdom of God.
Are you knocking on this door of faith? Are you trusting that God sent his one and only begotten son for you? That if you believe in him, that you will not perish. You will have everlasting life. Have you surrendered your life to him? Are you lining your life up with the will of God? Because he says, for everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And he who knocks, the door will be opened. And then he goes on, which of you? If his son asks for bread, will give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Think of this, if, you're, if your son, if your daughter, if your grandchild, if your niece, if your nephew ask you for a, for a gift, and they're asking here they say a, a loaf of bread or, or fish. You know, it's an example used. Jesus fed the, the 4,000 and the 5,000 with bread and fish. These are, are good gifts. These are, are things that will give them survival, will give them survival for this physical life. It will maintain them. But I know our, our kids today, they, they ask for, I mean, all kinds of random, goofy, strange Things And in our mind, we're thinking, well, those are bad things, and I'd much rather give them a snake or a rock because that's what they are. But there are things that our kids ask us for. And are we going to give them something that is bad instead? If they ask for a good gift, are we going to give them something that is rotten, something that will hurt them, something that will harm them? Of course not. And, and Jesus says, though you are evil... You know how to give good gifts. How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? We have a Father in heaven who loves us unconditionally, who sent his Son to die for us, even though we didn't deserve it because we were sinners, we were enemies of God. He still sent his Son to die for us, to save us, so that we could have eternal life. And so if we ask God for life and life eternally, he's not going to give us hell. He's going to give us life. But we're going to be asking, we're going to be seeking, and we're going to be knocking. We're going to have faith that Jesus Christ died for our sins, that God raised him from the dead. We're going to line up our desires with the desires of God because we're going to delight ourselves in God. And we're going to be seeking him continually. We're going to be asking him continually. We're going to be knocking continually. This is a, this ask, seek, knock, it's not a one-time event. This is an event, it's, it's talked about, you're doing it continuously. You're continuously seeking God, you're continuously asking God, you're continuously knocking on this door of faith. And then he finishes this. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. From verse 12. Well, if we turn to Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 36. Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 36, it says, But I tell you, but I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. 
And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Jesus starts this out. He says, but I tell you who hear me. Do you hear him? The Bible says, my sheep will know my voice. This is the voice of God. This is the voice of Jesus Christ himself speaking to me. He says, I tell you who hear me. So do you hear me? He says, to love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. We... We can struggle with this. We put stipulations on how and who and why we're going to love someone. We have reasons why we, we're going to hate someone. We have reasons why if somebody strikes us on one cheek, we have reasons why we're going to turn, not turn our other cheek, we're going to turn and swing our other fist. That's our normal human response. And if somebody borrows from us, you better believe they better pay us back. That's our normal human response. If they steal from us, we're going to make sure every part of the law and punishment they're going to have to face. But that's not what Jesus says to do. He says to love them. If they take from you, Give them more. If they borrow from you, give it as a gift. He says to love them. He says, do you realize that even sinners, even sinners love those who love them? He says, love those who hate you. That's a struggle for us because if, if someone hates us, most likely we hate them in return, right? We're kind of in agreement on that side usually. If someone hates us, we hate them in return. But Jesus is telling us we're to love those. We're to do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. That's a whole different concept of how to live our life. But he says, I tell you who hear me. Are you hearing me, Jesus says. When I'm telling you this, are you hearing it? Because if you hear it, you're going to be living it out. You're going to be loving as I have loved you. You had a debt to pay, you could not pay it. So I paid it for you. I shed my blood for you. You hated me, you were my enemy, and I still loved you. I still sacrificed everything for you. You tried to take everything from me, and I willingly gave you everything that you would ever need. Be merciful just as your Father in heaven is merciful. The Bible says in the Old Testament, my mercies are new every day. Every day my mercies are new. It's a new day. When we wake up today, it was a new day. When we wake up tomorrow, tomorrow is another new day with God. Are we holding the things 
of our neighbors, of our family, of our whoever? Are we holding it against them? Making them suffer, punishing them for their past mistakes? Or are our mercies new every day with them, loving them just as God has loved me? Putting the past behind and starting today as a new day. Well, it's, it's the, this sums up the law and the prophets. It was about uh, love your neighbor as yourself. It, it talked about all these commands. It lists all these can- commands. Do not murder, do not steal, do not commit adultery. Love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, this sums up the law and the prophets, and it's about love. So we were given, we were given the Ten Commandments. Moses brought down from the, from the mountain the, the tablets that were written in stone. The first time he brought them down, they got broke because here the Israelites had created a golden calf and were worshiping idols. And, and Moses dropped it, and he had to come back and get another tab of the same commandments. But Jesus comes, and he, he gives us two. Love the Lord your God with all your soul, all your heart, and with all your mind. And to love your neighbor as yourself. This, do you love your neighbor? If you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal from them. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to kill them. And you know what, how you can kill your neighbor? You can kill them by hating them. You can kill them by hating The Bible says if you have anger in your heart, it's just as if you have murdered them. You will not commit a, a, a adultery. You will not covet your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's husband. Do you know that if you have lust in your heart towards your neighbor's wife or your neighbor's husband, you have committed adultery? If you love them, you won't, you won't be desiring what they have and wanting to take it from them. If you love them, you will be happy for them and not coveting what they want. He says, so Jesus says, so when everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. Would you want your neighbor to take from you? Would you want your neighbor to steal from you, to hurt you, to to speak bad of you? Would you want your neighbor to hate you. Everything we're going through in this Sermon on the Mount, it has to do with our heart. We've listed a lot of physical things, but it has to do with your heart. Where is your heart? Is your heart, does it line up with the will of God? Does it line up with God's desires? Is your heart seeking after God? Is your heart knocking at that door of faith? Desiring a life of eternity in heaven? Knowing that Jesus Christ died for you to forgive you. But he didn't just die for you. He forgave. He died for everyone that would call on his name. The Bible says that God desires that none should perish. And if his desire is none for us, for none of us to perish, then we need to be loving even our enemies. We need to be praying for those who are persecuting us because God's desire is that they should not perish as well. It's a question I think we need to ask ourselves each and every day. Is my heart lined up 
with the Word of God? Or is my heart lined up with my flesh? With my own wants, my own desires? Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Seek God in everything you do. Meditate on His Word day and night. Pray continuously, meaning have a relationship with God continuously. Give God praise in every and all circumstances because you believe. And when you ask, ask believing that He will answer. Because when you're asking, you can believe because you're lining up your asking with the will of God. And your actions are showing that your heart lines up with the will of God. In James it says, faith without works is dead. We don't work for our salvation, but because of our salvation, because Christ laid down his life for us, we do good deeds. We love our neighbors. We do good to others. We're there for others. We're kind, compassionate, gentle. As far as it depends on us, we're living at peace with everyone. We do this because of what Christ has done for us, lining it up with his word. We have a God that loves us unconditionally. His love doesn't waver. His love it's not even explainable in our own human words. It's hard to understand that kind of love. A love that accepts us right where we are just as we are and God desires that we would love each other in that same way. It seems impossible. And the Bible says with man, yeah, it is. But with God, all things are possible. So seek God in everything you do. And when you seek him, you won't even have to worry about asking because God already knows the desires of our heart. And you won't have to worry about knocking because of our faith. That door has already been opened and no one can close that door. It's amazing. It's amazing to have a God who loves us. Next week, we're going to get into narrow is the gate to eternal life. Few will enter through it. May we never be the few that fail. There are few in the churches today. May we be the few that know Jesus Christ. May we not be the many that have never enter, entered the door of a church, never had the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. May we be the few that testify continuously to the many that are walking away. So we'll get into that next week. Have a, a glorious week. Keep, uh, keep our kids in prayer as summer is coming upon us. Families, health, this corona fiasco. 
have an amazing week. God bless you.